So I wanted to go over an example of creating a class, and this is going to be helpful for milestone one um, for the creating the ingredient class. So this is assume this project is a game, whether it's a soccer game or basketball game that we're creating, and we're going to need a player, um, a player object. And the player object is going to have the attributes of a name. It's going to have a name and a jersey number. So what we did is created a class. So you can see the public class player or player is the name of the class. And we have two instance variables, name and jersey number. Uh, so notice that we, we have uh, created the, we associated the correct data types to each of these instance variables. So a name is a string and a jersey number is an integer. Uh, note that we didn't assign them to be private yet. So by default, um, they are going to be public. Um, this is something that should be changed, and we'll come back to that later. Um, and notice we have these accessor and mutator methods, uh, which we'll come back to as well. So, okay, so that's one thing. We created the uh, appropriate instance variables with appropriate data types. And now we want to look at um, how to actually prompt the user to enter the name and the jersey number and validate the user input. Okay, so... Um, so we have a few uh, variables here. So we have the scanner to read in the user input. Um, name temp is going to store the temporary name that the user enters. Uh, it's gonna, the jersey num temp is going to store the jersey number that the user enters, and we're initializing it to negative 1. And then we have this boolean valid jersey num. Um, we're initiating it uh, to, to the value false. Okay, and we'll come back to that. And we have this regex. This is a regular expression. Um, this is a concept, uh, more of an advanced concept, that you should try to take advantage of. It's not required, but you should try to take advantage of and use it for validating um, the characters that are allowed in certain strings. Okay, so let's, um, and we're going to have, I'm going to post something on the discussion board that explains how to use uh, regular expressions, um, some additional resources for that. So here we create an instance of the player object. So we create a player one is the name of the object. So the player, right, is the class. So player is the class that we created, right? So this we're inside of that class, um, but we're in the main method. So we can create an instance of the class player. We named it player one, and it's a new object player, right? So this is the default constructor, um, which you'll learn about constructors later on. But by default, you just put player parentheses open parentheses, close parentheses, and now you have a new player object, and it's named player1. So then we start to read in the player uh, name from the user. So just as in Stepping Stone Lab 3, you read in the, the user input, and you can validate the user input. So we're going to use the regular expression, which I spoke about earlier, um, to validate the user uh, user input for the name. So notice we have this regular expression here. So basically this is saying that the user must enter a character, which is a lower uppercase letter or some combination of lower and uppercase letters and numbers. So that's basically what this is saying. Um, again, there will be a discussion post that ex explains what all this means. It looks kind of foreign right now, but don't worry. This will make sense once you look over that discussion post. So basically you're checking to make sure that after you read in the name from the user, you're assigning it to name temp. You're checking that this name temp value, right, the name that was entered, the string that was entered, uh, contains only the lower and uppercase letters and numbers, right? So this is the regex expression that we defined here. So as long as it matches that, right, as long as it contains only lower and uppercase uh, letters and numbers, like some combination of those characters, then it's valid and you entered a valid name. Otherwise, else, it was not valid, right? And so we're going to give the user a second attempt. So we're going to say, error, you, didn't, you did not enter a name, the correct name, and try again. Okay, so enter the player name again. It reads in the player name, assigns it to name temp, and again, we check to see if it's valid, right? We check to make sure that it matches the regular expression, so basically that it contains some combination of upper and lowercase letters and numbers. And if so, we print out you entered a valid name. Otherwise, you did not enter a name and you are out of attempts. Okay, so notice how we use the if statements just like we did 
and uh, you should have done stepping stone lab three how we nested if statements with inside of other if statements and use this uh, branching control structure to validate the user username so we're going to do the same for the jersey number so instead here we're going to take advantage of the idea of loops okay so this is something you're going to learn in module five um, and it's you're going to use a do while loop to continuously ask the user to enter in a jersey number until that jersey number is valid okay so which what, what you're using is this boolean that we assigned here valid jersey num note that is initialized to false okay so by def initially it's false so when you go into this do statement remember that that uh, variable that boolean is false so we're going to ask the user to enter a jersey number we're going to check that it's an integer right so we use the same if statement that we used in stepping stone lab 3 we're going to check that it's an integer if it is then we're going to assign that integer to jersey num temp that the user entered we're going to assign it to jersey num temp and then we're going to do some further validation to make sure that the jersey number is not negative so you can't have a negative number on your jersey so it must be zero or greater okay so we check that if so we say valid jersey num equals true so we assign that boolean to true and what's going to happen is it's going to exit the while loop because now this condition is true right so this condition um, is going to continuously uh, make sure this loop uh, repeats until not valid jersey num basically until until valid jersey num is true so the idea here when you put this not you're saying that you want to continuously go iterate through this loop while valid jersey num is false as soon as it becomes true you can exit the loop so that's why we add this not here not means while false while valid jersey num is false um, otherwise if we didn't have this not it would be while it's true however this wouldn't be what we want we want it to be while it's false so we have this not so while valid jersey num is false we continuously do this so basically while the user does not enter a valid jersey num it's going to continuously iterate through this loop and continuously ask the user to enter a jersey number okay so notice we have this else statement here if the user did enter a negative number it lists the user no you entered a negative number please try again and it's not going to change valid jersey num right because it never gets into this if statement so valid jersey num is still going to be false and it's going to go here it's going to see that it's still false and it's going to iterate again okay and if the user did not enter an integer in the very beginning it goes to this else statement here and says you did not enter an integer please try again and note that valid jersey num was never assigned to true so it's still false and it's going to iterate again so the only way it's going to valid jersey num is going to turn back to true is if the user enters an integer and then make sure that the integer is greater than or equal to zero if so it's valid and we're going to set valid jersey num uh, valid jersey num to true and this will break out of the loop because now this is no longer false it is true and it um valid jersey num is now true and it can break out of the loop okay so now we're going to assign um, the actual values that the user entered to the player one object that we created so remember we created this player one object here right it's a player object and it's named player one so we're going to assign the variable's name to the value that the user entered named temp and the jersey number to the value that the user entered uh, jersey num temp okay so notice that we just did player one dot name we can do this because the 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 name and jersey number are currently public right we did not make them private instance variables we made them public because by default if you don't say they're private they're going to be public and remember at the top here we did not say they're private so by default they're public and we can just say player one dot name and access these instance variables directly okay however this is not good um, usually 
you want to be able to, to make these uh, instance variables private. You want them to be private, and this is um, supports the idea of encapsulation. So that this is basically the idea that you want your instance variables to be private to you and local to the class itself, right? To that object itself, and it should not be accessible outside of that class. Okay, the only way to be able to access or modify those variables is through the accessor and mutator methods. So those are those methods that we created here. Set name, set jersey number, get name, and get jersey number. So these are mutator methods, and these getters are accessor methods. So you should be able to only access or modify or mutate these instance variables only through these methods. So currently we can set the player one, uh, the name and the jersey number this way. However, this is not the correct way, the best way to do it, um, but we can because these are public uh, instance variables and we're just printing the information out here. So let's actually see how this would work if you instantiate a player object in a different class. Okay, so notice here we created another class called player test and we're just going to instantiate a player two um, player object. So this is a, another object called a player object called player two. And notice how we can set the name directly, right? We can just say player two dot name, player two dot jersey, and set the values directly. So if we go back to our player class, so in our player class, um, notice that again these two instance variables are public so if we change these to private which is what we should do for encapsulation now they're private so notice there's now an error over here right so now we can't access them directly because these variables are only private to that class okay so now this is where you have to use the getter and setter methods so what we have to do is use our getter method or setter methods so set name and set jersey number okay so these are the setter methods that we created these are public and this is how we can modify um, at, uh, mutate or or get the instance variables of the object so now there's no errors because we're using those setter methods right so these two methods here because these two variables are now private. So this is the idea of encapsulation. We're making the instance variables private and we're using the getter and setter methods. Okay, so down here, let's make those same modifications. So we're gonna say set name is name temp. Okay, and we're gonna say set jersey number and to the jersey number entered by the user okay and then here we can't just say dot and it's only reason there's no, it's not showing an error here even though we made these private is because um, we're actually in we have a main method we're using the main method inside of the class um, however remember if we were to use this and outside of the class um, it would create an error if we did it this way because these instance variables are now private just like you saw in the example with player test. Okay, so this is going to be get name and get jersey number. Okay, so this is how you would set and get the values now. So if we were to run this, get our dot, and if we were to run this, we could say let's enter uh, John enter the valid name great let's enter a negative number see what happens oh please try again another negative number please try again okay let's enter correct number five and there you go it prints uh, John and uh, five for the player name in Jersey because we entered two valid numbers and notice here how this continuously repetitively asked me to enter the correct um, jersey number until it was valid. So I hope this all makes sense and um, you should use these ideas for uh, milestone one for the ingredient class. Please reach out if you have any questions.